Hey, everybody. I hope you're having a good day so far, and thank you for joining me. Um, if you're watching the live or catching the replay, I really appreciate it. Um, if you are watching live, just say hi in the comments. And if you are watching the replay, just put hashtag replay in the comments. And that just helps me out a little bit. So have you guys ever been curious about how much activity you should get um, or how much exercise you should be getting on a regular basis? Um, so the general recommendations for Americans are 150 minutes of moderate aerobic activity and then two days of muscle strengthening activity each week. So that is what um, the government recommends for like the general recommendations they recommend for um, every person to um, to be healthy. Um, but just like food guidelines for Americans, these recommendations are very general, right? They're general. They don't consider a lot of um, factors. And, uh, and so that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about um, the most important factors you, can, you should consider um, when you're trying to figure out how much movement you should be getting. Because I get asked this question all the time, and it's really different for everyone. All, the, all of my clients are um, different and they have different goals and they have different um, uh, factors. You know, they have different lifestyles. And so it's going to be different depending on these things. And so today I want to share the most important factors um, that I usually consider when I re make recommendations. And so this is this is what I'm telling you um, you should consider when you're trying to figure out how much exercise is right for you, how much movement is is right for you, whatever you want to call it. Because, um, you know, I, I, I've worked with over exercisers before and I've worked with under exercisers and I've worked with people who um, who have the right mindset and the right idea about exercise as well. And so everyone is in a different place and um, over exercising can be just as detrimental to your health as under exercising. So that's why I think it's so important to talk about this. All right. So let's get into the Three, there's three factors that I um, think you should consider when when de, um, trying to decide how much movement you should get on a regular basis. So the first one you should consider is what are your goals? What goals do you have? Because everyone has different goals. You know, some people it may be to lose weight. Some people it may be that they want to, um, you know, uh, they want to exercise to help with a health issue or um, to prevent health issues or whatever it is. So, so consider what your goals are first, right? Staying physically active helps support uh, good health by improving your fitness and lowering your risk of chronic illness. Um, so depending on what your health and fitness goals are, uh, there are exercises to achieve them. And so that's another thing to consider when you consider what your goals are. Um, so, for example, if you're older, your risk for falls is higher, right? When you get older, your risk for falls is higher. So you may want to focus on exercises that give you um, better balance like Tai Chi or yoga or something like that that gives you better balance because that is your goal, better balance so you don't fall, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So if you worry about heart disease, um, cardio will strengthen your heart and your lungs. So you may want to focus on cardio if you have heart disease in your family or if you've been told that you are at risk for it or you have it, you will want to more focus on strengthening your heart and your lungs 
to help um, prevent heart issues or to help uh, an, an existing condition, right? Um, so, so you'll want to do stuff like biking, jogging, swimming, and my favorite, walking. That's like my favorite cardio because it's, it's simple. I don't dread it, you know, and so I like to choose walking. And, um, and so if you, if your goal is to increase strength, you'll want to focus on resistance training, some kind of resistance training. Um, so you can lift weights, you can use uh, resistance bands or do some kind of resistance exercises like squats and push-ups. Those, um, those don't require weights, but they work your muscles. And so it just really depends on what your goals are. Um, so you could also do what I do and I do a little bit of all of these things. Okay. So I do, I do some yoga for balance and for, um, really for st stretching out my muscles and relaxing and all that kind of stuff. And then, um, I do resistance training to build my muscle. And then I do cardio like walking to, um, to help strengthen my, uh, heart and lungs and, um, just give me enough movement for the week. Right. So, so that's the first thing is to consider what your goals are. Okay. The second factor you need to consider is your health issues. And this is very important for when you're trying to choose like how much movement, what kind of movement you want to do. Um, you've got to consider your health issues. So in order to find your movement sweet spot, you have to keep, um, keep your health issues in mind. So working on your fitness helps with muscle and bone strength. Um, it helps with blood sugar balance and it helps balance your mood and your hormones. So um, exercise is is way more than just burning calories and trying to lose weight. It is good for all of these things. And so, um, you know, depending on uh, what kind of, of movement you enjoy or what kind of movement that you choose, it's going to um, help with these things, right? So um, you also have to consider with some, some health conditions, um, you may need to take some precautions or start out slowly um, if you're new to exercise, right? Like, um, you know, that's something that your doctor always tells you, you know, start out slowly, work your way up slowly. Don't just like go from no exercise to like exercise in an hour a day, that's, you're going to, you're going to burn out and you're not going to feel good. But if you work up slowly and do start with 10 or 15 minutes and, and add to that, then that's going to make you feel a lot better than just going all in and doing way too much too soon. Um, so, uh, so you have to consider your, um, your health conditions. So if you do have heart disease or something, or um, you have very weak muscles, well, you're not going to want to just start doing, go to go to the gym and start doing an hour of strength training. No, you're going to slowly work up to that and do 10 or 15 minutes at a time. So then you can slowly build your, um, your strength, right? Either your strength, the strength of your muscles or the strength of your heart, the strength of your lungs, build your balance, you know? Um, so keep that in mind. And um, so some great cardio exercises. Oh, I've already, I'm sorry. <laughs> I messed that up. Great cardio exercises was for goals. Now we're on health issues. I'm sorry about that. So um, I have my notes here that so I don't lose track. Um, so so I want you to listen to your body and, and don't overdo it. Right. Don't overdo it. And um, if you feel a lot of pain when you're exercising, uh, that's your cue. You need to stop 
and try again once you feel better. So don't just work through the pain um, if it, if you know that, okay, this pain, there's something wrong. There, you know, I probably overdid it. I pulled a muscle. You know, I don't feel good. So um, some pain is okay. Like if you have sore muscles the next day from lifting weights, yeah, that's fine. But when it's like pain, you know, you know the difference. Um, so, so if you feel pain, you want to stop and, um, and resume that once you feel better. So you always also, like I said, you want to talk to your doctor um, if you're starting a new exercise program or you're, um, you know, you're, you're new to exercise and just kind of get the, um, the go ahead from your doctor, let them know. So they're aware, you know, that you are doing something different for your health, just so they can kind of be aware and then like maybe give you, give you some tips and, um, you know, they'll probably tell you that's great, but start out slowly and, and work your way up. So you don't, injure yourself. And then, you know, if you're diabetic or something like that, they're probably going to tell you to pay close attention to your blood sugar and make sure that it um, doesn't get, you know, too low. Um, Cause that would be bad too. You don't want to like pass out from low blood sugar and stuff. Um, so keep those in mind. Um, consider your health issues when you, when you um, are considering your uh, exercise program and how much to do. And then um, the other important factor to consider when trying to find your movement sweet spot is your lifestyle. And this is very important as well because um, your lifestyle has a lot to do with the decisions you make, right? So if you're someone that is on your on your feet all day or most of the day, if you have a um, very active job where you're on your feet a lot of the day, then you may not enjoy walking or you, um, you may not enjoy exercises that keep you on your feet where you have to go be on your feet more, you know, after you've been on your feet all day. Is this making sense? You guys let me know. Um, so, so you, if you choose something where uh, you've been on your feet all day and then you got to go be on your feet some more, you're probably going to think of a lot of excuses why you can't go exercise, you know, regularly. So that that is not going to be the right thing for you. You want to choose something that you don't dread. You want to choose something that sounds good to you, right? Um so if you have a job where you're active and you're on your feet a lot, for you, you may want to stick with something like lifting weights or Pilates or swimming where you don't have to be on your feet anymore. You know, you can lift weights on, um, if you go to the gym, they have lots of machines you can sit and do your weightlifting. Or um, at home, if you have some dumbbells, you can do that while sitting on a bench or a chair or something. Um, so consider, consider those types of exercises if you already are, um, active at work and, and get a lot of steps and stuff like that in. Um, but on the other hand, if, uh, if you sit all day at work, then you may love getting outside and walking or running or doing lots of squats, you know, something to where you are more active and on your feet because you've been sitting all day and you're, and you, you're ready to burn some energy, right? So, um, so consider that. And also, if you do have an active job or um, you're active with your kids all day or something like that, you may not need to devote as much time um, to exercise as someone else, uh, you know, that isn't as active, that is more sedentary. That has a lot to do with um with your how much, how much movement, how much intentional exercise that you get. Um, so like for my husband, he is very active at his job. He is a manager and he's like on his feet all day walking around the facility and he gets, 
I mean, some days he's checked his phone and he's gotten like 20,000 steps that day. So he doesn't need to go walk anymore. He's been on his feet all day. So for him, you know, something else like weightlifting is better than, than going to get more steps when he's gotten 20,000 steps in a day. So, you know, consider that when you are um, thinking about what you want to choose, because like for him, uh, him, the thought of him going out for a walk after dinner sounds terrible because he's been on his feet all day. He's gotten, you know, a ton of steps in. And so that does, that's not something he's going to stick with. Because it doesn't, you know, he's like, oh, I got to go be on my feet more. That doesn't make any sense for him. So just consider these things, you know. Um, and if you are at a, a desk job and you're sitting all day, well, consider that, okay, now you need to go get more steps because you haven't gotten enough steps that day. You know, you probably don't get enough at work. Um so think about that. And, um, you know, really the key to find um, to finding an activity that you enjoy and you don't dread um, is to choose something you actually look forward to. Choose something that when you think about it, you're like, yes, I can't wait to do that. And I know I've had clients that are like, I don't like any exercise, like nothing. I don't like to exercise. Um, but usually when we start brainstorming they're like oh yeah I do like that I do like that I remember you know when I was younger I did really like that activity so it doesn't always have to be um intentional exercise it can be something that you know like a sport you used to play that you used to love or um you know something like that like just uh, getting active in the backyard with your kids or, uh, you know, anything, anything that gets you um, moving your body, right? So it doesn't really have to be this like intense, um, go work out at the gym for an hour or go jogging in the neighborhood. You don't have to do that kind of stuff. Just do pick something, some kind of activity that, um, that you look forward to that you actually enjoy. So, you know, my son, he loves basketball. So almost every day, unless it's like raining or like bad weather, he's out there in the driveway playing basketball, practicing his skills, you know, trying to get better. And that is exercise, but it's fun to him. He loves it. So, you know, just think about that. Like it doesn't have to be, um, you know, like at the gym or running or anything like that. So um, I hope these tips uh, gave you some ideas. I hope they help you figure out how much movement you should get and, and, and what kind of movement you should choose. And, um, you know, I, I want I want to say again, please keep in mind that um, more is not always better. OK, um, being being too sedentary is unhealthy. Definitely. We all know that. But too much exercise can take a toll as well. And I've seen that. I've seen that with clients. I've had over exercisers that um, their body just is not reacting well to all the exercise because they're already stressed out and they're adding a stressful exercise into the mix. And I have to you know, get them to um, realize and get them doing something else that is more, um, you know, better for their stress level, you know, instead of like going out for a run when you when you've been stressed out all day and that run is stressing your body even more you know, maybe yoga is better for you or just uh, walking or swimming or something that's more um, nourishing to your body than, than stressful. So I want you to keep that in mind when you're, when you're thinking about what kind of exercise you should do. Um, but, you know, one thing is for sure that we all need movement. We all need exercise that our body thrives off of that, right? We all need activity. Um, so, you know, no matter what your lifestyle is, no matter how sedentary or active you are, um, we all need 
um, we all need to move on a regular basis. That is the point. So um, just figure out, um, take these tips and figure out what your uh, movement sweet spot is. And let me know if you have any further questions about it. Um, you know, I've been exercising my whole life. I was a trainer back in my 20s and I've, you know, I've had a lot of training and certifications on uh, movement and exercise and all that. So um, if you have any additional questions, please let me know. And, um, and you know, I would like to know, like, what tip you found most helpful. If you want to leave me a comment about that, I will I always like to know what is most helpful to you. So um, so I can always make these lives better. All right, you guys, I hope this was helpful and I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you next Tuesday. All right, bye.